Hello, I'm Tara Brabazon. I'm the Dean of Graduate Research at Flinders University and welcome to Vlog 240. Moving from universities into industry. This is the second instalment in our Sarah Trilogy. Last week we investigated the movement from a diversity of industries and into our universities and we explored a series of pivots some ideas, some questions you needed to ask of yourself to create those pivotal movements in your life. Well, this week is a little bit different, I think, because this is about recognising your value and also the value of a PhD. And from recognising that value and understanding that value, you can then move the next steps and stages into a different sort of career and a different sort of life. Now, we know right now, today, most of the students who complete a PhD do not remain in a university. Most students complete a PhD and leave to other jobs. Noting, of course, that at least one third of our students never leave work, so they're doing a part-time PhD and stay in work. And also, as we talked about last week, a substantially interesting group has a great job, perhaps leaves that job temporarily, does a PhD and returns to a promotion arc. So those groups we know about, we're not really dealing with those groups today. We're dealing with the group that does a PhD and is going on to different types of jobs. And that's tremendous. And the question is how you do that. How do you move from academia to industry? That is the party today. So let's do this. This is a really exciting one. So this vlog is different from last week because it has to be different. This one is, is really a how-to guide. So what you have control over today, what you have control over today, and how you enable this PhD, this academic arc and moment of your life, how you render that meaningful and open for a diversity of industries. And all the 10 variables I'm gonna talk about right now involve you. You have control over these 10 variables. So this is quite exciting. Let's do this, yeah. <laughs> Let's do number one. This is a great one. Flip your CV, flip your CV. Now this started with Kendall Powell's really fine article in Nature. And so while it may seem, oh look, this is about the experimental sciences, actually it's not. This flip your CV strategy works for all disciplines and all subject areas. So what you need to do today is as follows. And this was this was good advice. Construct two separate PhDs. Oh, sorry, two separate CVs. Construct two separate CVs. Have the CV for industry and have the CV that perhaps enables an academic life. So from this point on, you have two CVs. The academic CV, and the industry CV, right, and label them in that way. Then the next stage that follows is brilliant. What you need to do is flip the industry CV. And what that means is you take the publications, the presentations, the conferences, and place them at the end of that CV. So of course, academic, it's all about the publications at the front. You've now got to flip it. So for the industry CV, publications and so forth, still important, but they're at the back of the CV. So what goes at the front? <laughs> teamwork. Your examples of teamwork, collaboration, and the deliverables in your life and career. Now, this is quite challenging because this flip is also a flip of mindset. So much of academic life is about individual achievement. Me, me, let me talk about me. Have I told you about me recently? Me. Let me tell you about me and my achievement. Me, me, me. Now, the industry CV is different. It's what you can do for the business. What skills and abilities have you got to value add to that business? So, what are you going to bring to the organisation? What can you do for the organisation? And part of that also involves your capacity to manage. Your capacity to manage people and your capacity to manage time. 
great one. So if you do, if you get nothing else out of the vlog today, but have the two CVs and flip them, winning, great, fantastic. Number two, crucial one I would argue, have a professional development plan from the first day of your PhD. So start, because we know at, at least 60% of our students do not remain in universities after the PhD. So it's pretty good odds that you're not going to remain in a university after your PhD, right? So from day one that you enroll in a PhD, have a professional development strategy, have an industry strategy. And, you know, I've seen this recently with some very good friends of mine that, you know, their postdocs have finished or the casual teaching work has dried up and they're left saying to me in my office, well, look, what do I do now? Bit late at the end of a postdoc, right? So you need to have an industry plan from the start of your graduate degree. And this emerges through working hard, absolutely, but also having a strategy, having a plan. And that plan is for professional development, but understanding the skills you are going to need to not only develop, but demonstrate as you move into industry. So, think actively about translational research. If you don't know what that phrase means, <laughs> find out and work out whatever industry you're in, whether it's publishing, theater, whether it's marine biology, look at how translating your research into diverse communities, how that operates. Know how it works, learn the vocabulary, and be able to use that vocabulary. Three, work hard on collaboration in adjacent industries. This one certainly changed my life. So this means you're in this discipline, and that's tremendous. A PhD is about expertise in a discipline. Cool. On the way through, as part of your professional development, learn about the adjacent industries, the adjacent disciplines. Because to get any job, you're going to have to understand a company or business in depth. Let me explain. When you're approaching a business to get a job or a consultancy, you have to know as much about that company or business as the people already working in it. And can I just tell you, every single job I've ever got, every single consultancy I've ever achieved, I've been able to go into an interview or a high level discussion and I've known more about that business than the people interviewing me. And my favorite example of this was actually when I was applying for a job and there was a person on the committee who was the chair of this particular committee. And I'd read all the minutes from that committee. So he was the chair of the committee. I knew more about his committee than the person who chaired it. So that's what I'm talking about. And when you can exhibit that in an interview or a discussion, that's powerful knowledge. So know the business, know the workplace culture, know the people, also know the problems. The problems matter because They'll only hire you if you can solve problems. So you have to know the problems before you can solve them. So have a sense about the problems in the business and also their strengths and how you can enhance those strengths. So what's useful in this circumstance, particularly are professional organizations. So whether we're talking about the creative industries or engineering. So in moving to adjacent fields, work the professional organizations. And remember that face-to-face -face matters as well. The CV matters, all the online networking, LinkedIn, all that stuff matters. But even in a COVID time, the face-to-face, -face, even if it's digital face to digital face, matters. And you've got to ask yourself, in competitive times, are you memorable? Are you memorable? And if you're not, get memorable. Mm -hmm. Four, huge one. I've been feeling this one deeply as I've been preparing the vlog this week. Four, don't apologize for your PhD. Right, this is a big one. And in my office, I hear this a lot. So why am I doing this PhD? Why have I done this PhD? This PhD is useless. So <laughs> this is the stuff that's going on in people's minds and they're expressing it to me. Now let's handle this with reality, shall we? You hold a qualification that about 1% of the population holds. You hold a qualification 
that the bulk of the population don't even have the degrees to enable entry into this qualification. And further, you've graduated from a degree that, oh, about half the people that start don't finish. So like, wow. I mean, sit in the wow for a moment. Like, wow, that is incredible. That, that is an incredible achievement. So sit in the fabulousness. Sit in the wow for a while and go, wow. Wow, fabulous. Be fabulous. Now, I understand why we don't have the opportunities to live in that fabulous zone because we live in anti-intellectual times and there's really no doubt about that. Smart people are seen to be a problem. Don't give me that smart talk around here. Mm -hmm. So the world actually though is in the state that it is at the moment because we haven't listened to smart people. And if I was going to offer one critique of this time, it is that we live in a time where people's feelings, their vibe, their experience is seen to be incredibly important. Now, I'm, I'm not denying the value of feelings or, you know, a person's life at all. You know, if, you've, if you have got a life and you want to express that experience and honour who you are, that's great. You need to do that. But research is different. Research is about transcending the self. And we've lived in a time where some person's vibe or feeling is seen to be as relevant as some scholars research and that is a false equivalence so the time has come to say I value and respect your feelings on the matter but research is different let me tell you about the research so therefore sit in your fabulousness don't fear or deny your PhD sit with it with pride because you have done something extraordinary by gaining that PhD. So recognize its value. Now, in the vlog next week that I'm designing for Sarah, I've nearly finished it, what I'm trying to do is showing the value of that. So I want to break down the PhD and show the skill development within it and give you the language to express that, right? So that's what I'm doing next week. So sit in the fabulousness this week and then I will give you the language and the structures to show its fabulousness to others via skill development. But just remember, the world has a shortage of clever people. How many terrible things have happened in the world because someone has sort of overshared their personal experience and that seemed to be as valuable as somebody else's research agenda and research project. So it is the people who transcend themselves, who create the research that certainly value the self as a lens, value subjectivity as a lens, but go beyond it. So claim that PhD and know what it means and its value. Five, have an answer to the question why you're leaving academic life. Have an answer to the question why you are leaving academic life. This is important. And P.S. <laughs> Uh, I want more money <laughs> or I'd really like a permanent job they're not the answers to that question <laughs> so the key is to show that you believe in translating your research the key is to show that you want to transform the intangibilities if you will of research into the tangibilities of industry and business and life and that's a great project so make sure you've got a concrete good crunchy answer to why you are leaving the university sector and keep it positive not well have you seen the state of our universities right that's not the answer to the question you've got to have a proactive positive reason for the move six Suppress perfectionism and leverage your strengths. Yeah. Now, look, academic life can be and is very unhealthy because a lot of academic life is about waiting for people to notice us. So referee two to finally recognize how magnificent our research is. You know, people, please recognize me. I'm fabulous. Please, please give me feedback. Please, 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 please. The whole of academic culture is sort of based on 
in some ways relinquishing your power and being reliant on what other people think of you and that's pretty disastrous to be honest with you and academic jealousy means that there's a stack of people hundreds of people thousands of people that are really happy to express to you your weaknesses so you can see how really damaging this culture is and that's made worse because so many academics aspire to perfectionism rather than rigor and rather than achievement. So as I said in an earlier vlog, done is better than perfect. Full stop. But in many ways the industry imperative is different because what industry is about, this is the changing of the mindset, what are your strengths? Not perfect, what are your strengths? So list those strengths, enhance those strengths and then that's what we're doing next week in the next vlog then explain the value of those strengths focus your attention on what you do well yes acknowledge the weaknesses work on them but if you're a good speaker that is a blessing that is a rare gift spruik that if you're magnificent at diverse modes of writing what a gift that is so again promote and stress that Seven leads in from where we've been really. Change your mindset and work on relationships. Mm -hmm. So how are you going to fit into an organization? How are your skills going to enable the development of that organization? This again is really a big change in mindset for academics because academics go on and on and on about themselves. How great I am, if I told you about me, let me tell you how great I am. Thanks, 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 that's great. But the rest of life, the rest of people are not hugely interested in that academic mindset. It's like, great, you've got that, I wish you well, right? But the next question is the important one. Okay, you've got all these skills, what can you do for the business? What can you do for the organization. So this means, firstly, select your supervisor carefully. If there is a sub-theme of these vlogs after all this time, it is clearly that the selection of the supervisor will determine the success of your life. Hashtag no pressure. So the supervisor who knows people, knows people outside of your organization, outside of the university sector, they are the really, really valuable supervisors. So if you're interested in publishing and the publishing industries, they can connect you with publishers. If you're interested in 3D printing, they can connect you with 3D printing organizations. You're interested in tourism, tourism organizations. You're interested in sport and sporting industries, connect you to the sporting industries. Yeah. So these informal networks matter. In fact, I can't even convey in language how important these informal networks matter, right? So go for it. But also in universities right now, and Flinders is a great example of this, we also have formal industry mentoring schemes, formal industry partnerships. So if you're not getting what you need from your supervisor, then go directly to those formal industry mentoring schemes in your university, and they will provide those pathways and the trajectories. You will meet great people who can give you a job. Okay, eight understand the value and the importance of your interpersonal skills. Now again, this is really important and <sighs> interpersonal skills is one of those phrases that's become a bit of a ticker box. Have you got interpersonal skills? Yes. You know, like it's like a dolly quiz. Yeah, yeah. Do, do you like people with blonde hair? Yes. Have you got interpersonal skills? Yes. Okay. It's rarely used with precision, so let's unpick the interpersonal skills thing a little bit. You need to show that you can master them and you need to show how they are valuable to the organisation. So interpersonal skills describe the capacity to make connections, particularly with the diversity of groups. So make connections with people who are not like you. So there are many ways to demonstrate interpersonal skills. Firstly, your capacity to be present. So not want to be elsewhere, not looking at the person that's coming into the door, being present in the moment. Also, listening skills. Listening cultures, crucial to interpersonal skills. 
the capacity to ask incisive questions and also the capacity to understand the context in which that communication is taking place and understanding that as the context changes, so does the communication mode. Yeah. So be patient. Recognise that not everything is about you and everything is about your connection with others. Nine, find and claim opportunities. Find and claim opportunities. My fear, and I hope my time as Dean has addressed this, but my fear has always been that we are training our students to be conservative. We're training our students to sort of sit back and wait for life and fabulousness to happen. But right now, with the state of the world, if you're going to step back and wait, you're going to be waiting a real long time. If you're waiting for something to happen, in the current state of the world, it's not going to happen. So what I need you to do, what I need myself to do, what I need we, we all to do, is when we have a whiff of an opportunity, a bit of leverage, something appears to be happening. Wow, something's happening. What I want you to do immediately is take the next step. You see something on Twitter? Send that tweet. You see something happening in a workplace that's expanding? Send that email to HR. Go one more step. Meet that person. Go and meet that person. Get more information. Now, I know this is challenging very confronting personally. But what I would say to you is do take that step. Go for it every time. Go for it. And don't assume that it's going to end badly. <laughs> and don't assume that it's going to end well. What I want you to do is become invested in the process, not invested in the outcome. So live in the moment, take the next step, ask the right questions, concentrate, have a go. Live in the moment. So don't be wedded to the outcome, be wedded to the process. Be wedded to the moment and take that step. 10. Create your own experience. The most common worry that's expressed in my office when we talk about industry partnerships and industry futures is our students say to me, but Tara, I don't have any experience. Team, create your own experience. It's never been easier to create your own experience. So that means you're a good speaker, organize a speaking event for yourself, organize it. And if you can't organize it yet, come and see me at the OGR. I will organize it for you. You can speak, I'll record it, it's on your CV. Takes me 20 minutes. Do that. Organise it, right? So you need to develop experience lines on your CV. So say, right, well, I can do this. So create an online service. That's how consultancies start. So you need marketing experience. We'll start to show how you can sell or value add that article, that poster. Show how your ideas move to different communities. You have control over that. Okay, so yes, you can volunteer with local government, you can volunteer with different organisations, great, do that, tremendous. But look at yourself right now, right now. What have you got control over? And the answer is, you've got control over much more than you think you do. So you've got this skill, that's great. Think about how you value add to that skill. That's an organisational strategy. So what we need to start doing is line at a time, adding this to your new industry CV. And always remember, you have much more control over your life and the trajectory of your life than you think you do. Remember the key difference, I think, between a university and a business, <laughs> noting the falsity of that binary opposition, is that most businesses want to make a profit whereas most universities still have the core business of teaching and learning 
and research. Profit is secondary, uh, one would hope, and the focus is teaching and learning and research. So therefore, the key first decision for you to make when you're going, right, here's the PhD, and I'm moving into industry, the first decision you have to make is, do you wish to continue with research in some form? And that's great if you do. So therefore, you're moving into research and development. Whether you're working in the creative industries or big pharma, it is research development that is your thing. And that's great. That's a burgeoning area. That's a great decision. But a lot of people do their PhD and decide, you know what, it's been great, but uh, I'm done with research. So the research bit's been great. I've got these skills out of it, but I'm going to do something else. So you have to show what that something else is. And that's the next vlog that I've developed for Sarah. So how can we slice up the PhD in a different way to enable skill development? So just remember that you're not stuck. This is, this is a big area that's worrying me at the moment. So you're not stuck. If you are feeling stuck in your life or your career, then that's a sign. That's a moment for you, a pivot, a moment for you to make a decision because you're feeling stuck because you haven't made a decision. So take that on board and make a decision. Start something new. Experiment. Try. Try. Don't be perfect. Be innovative. Be fabulous. I wish you love, light and peace. Tea out.